Okay. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Second section Wednesdays. You guys know we're in like the second to last class, maybe the third to last class now. And then we'll review and then Rita's going to be taking over. So let's start with our warm ups. Find that comfortable position with your feet or in a seated position for the first half. It's up to you. All right. Starting at the top. Feet, shoulders width, nice and straight, balanced between the front and the back foot, the front and the back of the foot. Shoulders are hanging down. We start with the head. So just drawing the chin to the chest and lifting back up. Just nice, gentle stretches. But hey, Hugo. <laughs> Take a moment, connect with your breath. Release any tension you may be holding in the shoulders. We'll lift one more time, come back chin to chest, and then to neutral. Looking over one shoulder, back to center and across to the other side, letting those shoulders hang down. Never push too far. The body will naturally open over time. You might feel like when you look over the left shoulder, it's a little bit easier because of single whip. So we want to try to find that balance between the sides, between our body. All right, back to center. And then we link it all together. So chin to chest, ear to shoulder, drop the head back and around, ear to the other shoulder, chin to chest. Then we'll do three circles on one side. And then on the last one, when we draw our chin to our chest, we'll go the other direction. One more circle. We always end chin to chest and then we gently lift up. We never want to cause any dizziness. All right, shoulders are next. So this is a really good place to focus on your breathing since there won't be any change because you're not moving your neck. So we're going to lift. We're going to go uh, back, up, forward, and down. And as always, you can have as much or as little arm movement as you like. You can take the last two circles with large arms if that feels good. We'll do one more and then we'll go the other direction. So then we go forward, up, squeeze the shoulder blades together and down. And same thing applies. If it feels good to lift your arms nice and big, feel free. So a nice big circle coming back. All right, maybe we do one more. And we let the arms hang down. Okay. Elbows are next, right? Practicing our rotations for the rest of the form while warming up the joints. So arms are out. We let the fingertips fall down. We come into a ward off position, like hug a tree. Then we rotate like wave hands like clouds. And we just make smooth, even, and continuous. We're using the shoulder and elbow joints, kind of warming up the wrists a little bit too but also practicing for our, our forms. All right, one more circle. We can come into that ward off and then we can go the other way. So fingertips point down, we rotate at the sides and then we press down. So rotating and then pressing down. Nice circling, using the elbows. One more, and then we press all the way down to the hips. Nice. All right, so wrists are next. Always two choices. You can just rotate a few times like this or draw the elbows into it and do everything at once. Whatever feels good, and then we'll go the other direction. And then that would be coming inside and out. One more. And then shake out the arms. And we're going to find that hug a tree position. Slight bend in the knees, relaxing the waist. Arms come out to the in front. Fingertips are pointing towards each other. And we're just going to rotate from side to side. So using our waist, the space between our thighs does not change. This is what we're talking about. When we're using our waist, we're turning. Now, if you'd like, you can let your arms hang and swing and look behind you if that feels good. 
but we want to be aware of the space in our legs, not letting it collapse. The weight is even on the feet. If you're swinging, we slowly ease off. And then we come back to center. Okay, hello. Hips are next, right? So comfortable position, hands on the hips if you'd like. Let them hang down, whatever feels good, and just circle. So out to one side, back and around. As large or as small a circle as you want, as fast or as slow a movement as feels good. Take a moment, check in with your breath. Is it smooth, even, and continuous? And then let's go the other direction. Let's do two more circles. And then we'll come back to center. We have the knees and ankles left, right? So you guys know the two options. We keep doing the same thing. So feet together, knees together, if you'd like, just circling or taking it wide and doing the two circles. Follow what feels good for your body. Totally up to you. Other direction. One or two more circles. And then we'll slowly come back up. My favorite part, shake it out. Anything that feels good. Just shaking, arms up in the air, don't care. Whatever feels good. Just get the energy flowing. Pat the legs like Kelly does. That's great stuff. Wakes everything up. I love it. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. Yes. That's what it's all about, right? We warmed up. We got the energy flowing now. All right. Let's practice. So we're coming to the end of the section. It's gonna be a nice long practice today. We'll start at cross hands and we'll go all the way through to that left heel kick before we do the turn. All right, I'll face the other direction so we all move in the same way. And let's start in cross hands. Take a moment here, find that balance in your feet, shoulders width apart, sinking down, right arms on the outside. Take a deep breath before we begin. Let the energy sink down to your lower abdomen using full belly breathing as we move through our practice. Shifting to the right, embrace tiger, return to the mountain. Two circles with the arms, step, open up and strike. Roll back, connecting out and then turning. Press, circle in, touch the forearm, expand out. Open up the arms, coming back like you're over a ball, sit up the palms and push. Flatten the arms, fist under elbow. Transition like single whip, except we push out to the side. Step and ward off. Rotate for grabbing when you step the right foot. Make a fist, empty stance on the heel. Repulse monkey, number one. Natural step back, pushing off the front heel. Use your elbow to rotate the arm for number two. Hand in front of the shoulder. And number three. One arm forward. One back, diagonal flying, circling the arms, heel touch, open up, show splitting energy. Raise hands and step forward, stepping back, open up the arms, empty stance on the heel, closing the arms. White crane, circling, close step, open up, Empty stance on the toes. Brush knee, looking at your right palm. Two circles, both stance, open up and strike. Needle at sea bottom, moving forward, pull back, come up on the heel, change to the toes, sink down. Fan through the back, touching the wrist, both stance, one forward, one back. Fist under elbow, or sorry, chop with fist. Pressing down, protect the head. Step out for a bow stance, chop. 
and then strike with the palm. Parry, block, and punch. Connect out, circle both arms down. Step, parry to the side, block, and punch. Grasping the bird's tail. Warding off, rotate to show grabbing. Step, ward off, right. Roll back. Press. and push. Single whip, showing pulling, circle back, make a hook, warding off and then striking. Wave hands like clouds, move back, turn. Number one, opening up the hook. Two nice circles with the arms, double wide. Use that rotation that we were working on in our warm up. Last one, double wide. Corner direction with the foot. Make a hook, single whip. High pad on horse, move back. Empty stance on the ball of the foot, striking to the throat. Separation kicks, horizontal circle, step, and separate the arms. Closing, stand up, look, right, separation kick, bend the knee, change the arms. Sitting down, circle the arms, close, stand up, look, Left separation kick. Turning to the corner, straighten the leg, turn, touch down if you need to. Stand up, left heel kick. Bend the knee, brush knee. Right arm comes in front, two circles, step, open up and strike. The other side, brush knee, rotate. Two circles, step, open, and strike. Punching down, move back just like brush knee. Both arms come to the side together, open up, punching knee level. Turn, body chop with fist. Chopping when you step for your bow stance, weight moves forward with the strike. Parry, block, and punch. Connect out. Circle down. Parry to the side. Hold back your opponent. And punch. Right heel kick. Warding off first. Connect. Stand up. Right heel kick. Bend the knee. Strike tigers. Stepping down on one line. Left arm comes across. Bow stance, circling the arms, making fists right at the end. Move back the weight, arms don't change. Turning, arms come to the left side. Step and look, two circles, making fists at the end. Open up the left foot, connect out. Right heel kick, connect the arms. Stand up, heel kick, opening the fists. Bend the knee. Little turn to the corner. Stepping down, hands are at the hips and fists. Rotate, twin fist strikes opponent's ears. Left heel kick, arms come down, circling. Open up the fist, stand up, heel kick. Bend the knee. Okay, how'd we do? We feeling okay about the whole section? Hey, Mary. Hi. Haley.
Okay, any questions on what we worked on last week? We spent a little bit of time on it to get the rotation right. So I'm hoping everyone's okay. Yeah, we're good. Are you guys ready to work on a fancy turn today? <laughs> All right, so today we are working on the turn from left heel kick. And this turn's a little bit different because this one's on the ball of our foot. I'm gonna come as close as possible to the camera, okay? So when we do this, I'll do it from both directions. We've done our heel kick. One arm's corner, one arm straight. As we sit down, our leg is gonna point with our toe back, both palms rotate. So our left palm faces up and our right palm faces down. So from this position, we use momentum and we turn. Depending on the surface you're on, it'll be easier or harder, okay? From here, your right arm is gonna circle and connect and you stand up and then from there it's just a normal heel kick okay the hard part is the spin so to show you from this direction we did our heel kick we sit down rotate the palms and extend the leg back from here we turn we make sure our left foot lands to the corner kind of back into the side our right arm is going to circle down Stand up, heel, kick, bend the knee. Okay, so let's talk about the arms first. The arms are a little bit easier than the spin itself. So we're in our kicking arms. Okay, maybe I'll mirror you for a second. From our kicking arms, I'm mirroring you. Okay, all that's going to happen is your left palm is going to rotate facing up, and your right palm is going to sit down a little bit. So they're both sitting, right? They both just rotate. Yep. <laughs> so we go from here. We rotate. That's it. That's step one. Okay. So that part happens when we go from here to here. Okay. Yep. That's it, Yukiko. Yep. It just comes up. The front hand rotates up. Yep. And the back hand sits down. Well, so if it was like normal, because uh, I'm opposite you from the camera, but it just rotates. Yep, that's it. So we go from both palms sitting up and then left one's facing up, right one's kind of sitting down. See how it goes from sitting to like sitting down? It's not like rotated like this down because the elbow's still pulling down, but it's not sitting up like it was. So we go from both palms sitting to one up, one down. Then we do our turn, right? As we do our turn, our arms do not stay in this exact position. It would be impossible, right, to keep them in this exact position. So what happens is that we're here. So this is the checkpoint I want you to understand. This is where your arms are rotated. When we do our turn, the arms slightly change. So what happens is as we turn, our left arm comes into a ward off position and our right palm is kind of out to the side. Now, this should feel like one of the kicks that we already did, okay? So we do, um, we ward off and then we connect and then we kick, right? This is the same thing. So I want you guys to link this stuff together because it's gonna make it easier. So we go from here and we go into a ward off and our arm is out to the side. And then from here, it just circles down and connects. That's it. Make sure your elbows are a little out. We don't want them too far down. We want a little space there, okay? So we go from our kicking arms. We rotate both. As we turn, it kind of comes into a ward off position. And then we circle down and connect. And from here, it's just a normal heel kick arms open yes beautiful beautiful kicking arms um, okay i have a question how do you rotate yeah. the right hand if all you're doing is kind of like lowering it you're not really rotating the right hand right yeah the right hand is simply going from a seated position like this and then it's just sitting down just sitting down but not flat it's not flat because if it was flat then the, the elbow comes up and it's pointing out right so, it so we want like the elbow this and it comes down just kind of flattens 
Okay. <laughs> I always wonder so what you do with this hand. Yeah, because it's it's such a little one because this one clearly like you have to rotate it, right? Your front arm is a rotation, so the palm's facing up. This one's just kind of sitting down. It's going from sitting up, kicking, and then it's just kind of sitting down. And then from there, it just rotates. The, you use the elbow and you just rotate and connect. Does that help? Okay. I know that that hand is specifically like we say rotate both hands, but your right hand is just kind of sitting down. It's not really like it's, it's like it's here and then it's just here. But it's not like out flat like this because see if I really made it flat. See how my elbow is pointed out and we always want it pointing down. <laughs> All right, good, good. Okay, how do we feel about the arms? Do we have any questions? No? Okay, the turn. This is where it gets interesting. So we know now that we've kicked and our leg is up. When we rotate our arms, we're in this position. So key things to notice here. This position is the same as if I was stepping out for a bow stance, okay? You are bent into your leg, okay? My toe is not touching, it's hovering like, say an inch above the ground, okay? But when you do this, you can't try to lean and try to stay upright because your balance is gonna become off. You need to lean into it, just like you would lean into a bow stance. You see how I can change the position like I was back, but I can also step forward as if I was in a bow stance? That's gonna help with your balance, okay? So I really want everyone to get that out of this. You have to sink down. Remember how we were talking about the lean in Fair Lady, if anyone came to class on Monday, and how I was talking about you can't step out without leaning? Like you can't be like trying to step and be upright. Same thing here, okay? We're always leaning towards where like our front leg right now, this is our front leg because we're leaning back. Now, when we do this turn, it's a turn on the ball of your foot. So in order to do that turn, you can't have the weight in your heel, right? If the weight is centered on the whole part of your foot, you're not gonna be able to make the turn. Now, if you're like me with sneakers on carpet, you really have to whip yourself around to even make it at all, but you have to go with each surface that you're practicing on, okay? So when you do this, you don't wanna have a huge pause, okay? You wanna stand up and you wanna extend and then immediately turn, okay? Now, when you turn, yes, use your head. Like, look where you're going, right? Don't turn and then just kind of like stop here okay when you turn i'm looking over here at windows okay i'm looking when i turn and i'm trying to find those windows again okay that will help you it's just like a ballerina or a dancer when they do those turns they focus on one thing in the room okay and that's their point, and that's how they're able to keep going because that's how they're, they're focused. It's the same thing with a kick. If I'm kicking towards something and I'm feeling a little wobbly, I might focus in on a point on the wall or on like further ahead on the ground or something to help with the balance, right? So when we do this, I'm gonna do it to the front direction so you can see where your foot lands. So we're in the, we did the heel kick and I lean back and extend. When we land, my foot is behind and to the side of my front foot and it lands to the corner direction. That's gonna be the most difficult thing to lock in. It just takes time. And from here, you just stand up and point the toe down. But you have to try to be conscious of your weights in the front leg and then as soon as your foot touches, your weight comes into your other leg. Yeah, give it a few tries. Ooh, Rebecca, that was pretty. <laughs> that was your best one. Yeah, it looked great. Good. So just try it. You can, you can try from bending or from the kick. Yeah, Sam. 
Hi, so I was watching uh, Master Young talk about um, focusing your chi in your lower abdomen. And, and yes. I found that if you just kind of focus your awareness on that area, it kind of makes everything balance out. Do you have any more info on that? Oh, absolutely. So the, the thing about the center, okay, in Chinese medicine, and, and Kelly might know a lot about this too, they, they call the uh, lower vertebrae the gateway to life, okay? This is where all of your energy source comes from, okay? This is why we want to relax the waist. When we curve our back, it gets pinched, okay? But three fingers down from your belly button is what's called the dantian, and that is an energy source, okay? What happens is, is as children, you guys, you guys, some of you have had children. If not, you have had nieces or nephews or watched children, right? When they're really little, their bellies, like, really expand, and contract when they're breathing. And then we somehow lose that as adults, right? When we sleep, that exact same, same thing happens. That is bringing that energy down to this point. Now, when our center of gravity is lower, we have more balance, okay? When you're breathing up here, and your energy will get stuck up in this point, and your balance point changes, okay? So what happens is, is that your energy, your breath, your balance is here instead of here. So when you focus down into this energy point, this is what's going to bring that heaviness to your legs, that stability to your legs. Okay. And that's what's going to help your form. There's a really interesting story and I wish I could find the video clip on YouTube, but it seems to have disappeared and I don't have the cassette or VHS tape anymore, but there was a Chinese master who learned how to change his center of gravity. Now, why do I say this? Because our center of gravity is everything. And he went to perform a show and he simply did one move. It's the hardest thing ever to do, okay? I wish I had a wall right here. So what happens, oh, I'm gonna back you guys up for a second. Okay, so bear with me here. I'm gonna tilt you down. This master came into a room with a wall, he put his foot on the wall, put his hip on the wall and his shoulder on the wall. And then he lifts his other leg off the ground. Okay, can you, so take a wall, everyone go to a wall real quick, put your foot, your hip and your shoulder on a wall like this. And now see if you can lift your other foot up. Oh, everyone's got a wall, bear with me with this one. It's to prove a point on gravity. <laughs> it's nearly impossible, right? How do you do it? He had trained so long on his center of gravity that he was able to literally shift his center of gravity. And that was what he chose to show the, the government. He said, this is my skill. I'm just going to do this. And they were like, what? That's nothing. You didn't show us anything. But now all of you can experience that it's impossible like to have your foot, your hip and your shoulder all on the wall and lift your other leg off the ground. It's impossible. It takes great skill to do that. Right? So that's, that's the center of gravity. Our center of gravity naturally wants to be in the center of our body. And when we're doing kicks or anything like this, Sam, the lower we are, the easier it's going to be to balance. If you're trying to do this movement with a straight leg and turn, it's going to be very hard. It doesn't matter how long you've been training, okay? It's going to be very difficult. So you need, like, the key to Tai Chi and to the monkey mind and everything is um, the breath, okay? So when you're practicing the form, if you're having balance problems, if your mind is going out of control, focus back in on your breath and notice where it is in your body, okay? Because that breath will affect every inch of your body and your practice. <laughs> I'm glad you guys enjoy that. It's a really funny story. Like I couldn't believe it when I heard it and I've tried it for years to like readjust. So I can't do it. I don't think I'll ever be able to do it, but it's a great challenge, you know? Kelly, so, I, would, I would be trying, I would be trying this, uh, but I have an infected toe right now, so I can't exercise. So I don't want to yep. fall on my toe. <laughs> Next next week, though, or whenever you're feeling better, you won't forget it. 
or just watch the video and go try it again. So everyone's got this funny view of my body in the video now, but it's well worth it, okay? <laughs> Sam, does that help you at all? Yeah, that helps me a ton because it was like with every move that required kind of an awkward balance, like repulse the monkey, if I was focusing on, you know, 3070 and all that stuff, I was still fighting it. But as soon as I was like, okay, just kind of focus awareness on that center, it just, everything became natural. Yeah. And that's the magic of Tai Chi right there. Like once you focus in on your breath, like your body will just like relax and go into the movements and you'll get these benefits that you didn't feel before because you're more relaxed and that, you know, the, the relax and Tai Chi is the open extended joints, right? The joints and tendons and everything's opening, but you also need to like relax in your body. And in today's society with everything that we have going on, we live in a constant state of stress, right? So use your Tai Chi practice as that moment of calm, that moment of connection with yourself and your body and like releasing everything else from the world. <laughs> okay. So try the turn again. And when this time when you do it, I want you to take a big breath. Okay. So maybe you start standing, maybe you start with your foot in front of you for balance, but just take a deep breath first, relax into it, and then take another breath and just try to breathe into the movement and the turn. And then when you stand up the same thing, make sure you're breathing. Did that change it for anyone? <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay. You, Rebecca, not everyone's going to be perfect. You had one that was so golden today. <laughs> I need my ice. Yes. Bag. You need your ice skates for this, for sure. Or bare feet, or I mean, um, socks on wood floors. <laughs> it makes for a very smooth turn. <laughs> All right, so take note while you're practicing this spin, where your foot is landing, okay? If you notice, my foot's a little bit far forward on that land. It should be a little bit back, okay? because you want it to be in a naturally short stance. So then you can easily pick up the front foot. You guys, I think everyone here knows golden rooster on one leg, right? When you step back, if you step back too far, then you're gonna have a really hard time picking up your front leg. It's the same thing here, okay? It's the exact same thing. So if you spin and you step back too far, it's gonna be really hard and wobbly to pick up your leg. Yes. Maria, it looks great. Denise, looks great. Marion, looking good in that chair. <laughs> hey, we all have to take a break sometime, okay? <laughs> Sam, I can only see your upper body, so that's all I got. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I thought I should at least watch, you know? Yeah, I've done it. I mean, you, it's yeah. just hearing the information helps, you know, and then when you get back, you can practice with us. There's no problem. You go with where your body is today. That's part of Tai Chi. Okay, how do we feel about, I know you guys got the arms now. How do we feel about the turn? We feel comfortable? Can, let's try to put it together, okay? So from the left heel kick, make sure you have a solid foot and remember to breathe, okay? The arms are up, palms are sitting up. Reach the foot back, rotate your palms, left palms up, right palms facing down. Use the momentum to turn and land. Now you see my arms kind of in that ward off position here. Okay, and then rotate your right arm using the elbow and you're gonna stand up at the same time. Good, and then a heel kick. You guys are good at heel kicks. I don't need to make you do them so many times. Okay, let's do it again. So from our left heel kick, knees up, reach back, spin. How's your, your landing position? Did you land with your left, uh, your weight on your left leg? Then you rotate, stand up, heel, kick, bend the knee. Okay, how are we doing? Does anyone have any questions? 
<laughs> You're doing good. I saw that one that was so golden. Everyone's not going to be perfect, okay? It's like the heel turn. You know, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. But working on it continuously will allow you, you know, the better balance. You'll understand the momentum. And as I said, every service is different. So maybe you nail it inside your house. And then you go outside and you're practicing with sneakers on carpet like I am. And you fly around the pavement. <laughs> you know? <laughs> So every time's different. <laughs> Good. Let's do it again. So left heel kick. Legs up, toes pointed down. Reach and extend back. You've rotated both palms. Turn. Weight in the left leg. Circle the arm so you can connect and stand up. And kick. Bend the knee. Okay, let me see you guys do it one time. I know everyone can do this without me showing you. Left heel kick. All right, reach and extend back and turn. Yes. Okay, remember to keep your arms extended, okay? As we do the turn, we don't wanna collapse in. We wanna keep them out. As we do the turn, it just, it comes into a little bit of a ward off, but we don't want it to be ward off like this, right? Large movements, and then it's just connection, okay? Let's do it one more time. So left heel kick, reach back, rotate, and spin. Good. Kelly, your heel kicks have gotten really high. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it looks good. It looks really good. Now, does anyone have any questions on this movement? It's kind of a fun one. It's like one of those uh, like ballerina spins almost. We're only going 360. So I think you guys have the tools now. Yes, that was good weight on the back leg. That's one of the important things too. Like when you do this movement, if you're leaning and you've extended and you try to turn and keep all that weight on the front leg, like you're going to lose your balance when you come around, right? So like you may be fine here, but then maybe like you're like all wobbly, okay? So that's the key to this movement is when you turn, I'm immediately sinking into that back leg. Can you guys see from that angle or is, okay, good. All right, one more time, and then we'll put it all together, okay? So left heel kick, standing up, reach back, rotate the palms, and turn. Weight comes to the left leg, left arm, right arm circles to connect to the left while you're standing up, and then you kick and bend the knee. Okay. You guys are picking up things so quick now. I keep thinking like, oh, we'll just do one move for class. And then I'm like, man, we still have time. <laughs> All right, so any questions? I'm gonna ask one more time and then we'll practice the whole sequence through to the end. Professionals now? Okay, one, you want one more time with the turn? Okay, <laughs> let's do the turn one more time, <laughs> okay? So your left leg is up, arms are out to the side. You reach and extend back, left palms up, right palms down and turn. Weight comes into the left leg. Circle the arm to connect and stand up. Heel kick, bend the knee. Yes, okay, good. I love, I love that uh, we've gotten to the point in Zoom now where we have like nonverbal cues that can be translated through video. <laughs> it's pretty great. All right, you guys are sure you don't have questions. All right, let's practice the whole section again, okay? And then we'll close class. So from cross hands.
Embrace the tiger, return to the mountain. Just like brush knee with a different meaning. Roll back. Press. And push. Transitioning to fist under elbow. Warding off. Empty stance on the heel. Repulse monkey. Natural step back. Number two. Check in with your breathing. Number three, are you breathing all the way down to the lower abdomen? Diagonal flying, same thing. Leaning forward slightly, open, splitting energy. Raise hand and step forward. White crane, close the arms, showing the shoulder strike, open your wings, brush knee, needle at sea bottom, step in closer, toes up and then toe stamp. Fan through the back. Arms are out in front, so one forward, one back. Turn body, chop with fist. Remember to save the weight for the strike with the left palm. Parry, block, and punch, connecting out. Parry into the side, and then punching. Grasping the bird's tail, ward off right. Roll back, press, and push. Single whip. Remember to show pulling, making the hook, block and strike. Wave hands to the side first, open the hook, circling, shoulder width, check in with your breathing. Are you breathing all the way down? Smooth, even, and continuous. Last one goes to the corner. Single whip. High pad on horse. Empty stance on the ball of the foot. Separation kicks. Horizontal circle the arms. Show separating. Close the arms. Stand up, look, and kick. Bend the knee, change the arms. Sitting down, touch, circling, close, stand up, look, kick, bend the knee, turning to the right, straighten the leg, turn, close the arms, Heel kick, bend the knee, brush knee, two nice circles, open up and strike. Other side, check in with your breathing again. Punching down, just like brush knee, arms come to the side together, open up, punch. Turn body, chop with fist, protect your head. 
chop and strike. Harry block and punch. Connect out, circle down, Harry to the side, hold back your opponent and punch. Warding off, right heel kick. Sitting down, stepping on one line, left arm comes across, step and look. Strike tiger, making fists at the end. Other side, move back, turn. Arms come to the left this time, step and look. Two circles, making fists at the end. Open up your foot, connecting out with your left arm. Circle the right arm to meet it. Stand up, right heel kick. Bend the knee, little turn to the right, twin fists, hands to your hips when you step, circle and strike. Fist tails go down, circle the arms, stand up, left heel kick. Here's our move, reach and extend back and turn. Weights in the left. Circle, stand up, right heel kick, bend the knee. Okay, good, great practice today. Okay, so next week we have parry block and punch with a little bit of a different transition and then a parent closing up and cross hands. So we'll see, it might be one or two weeks depending on questions and whatnot. And then we'll review for a little bit and Rita will take over. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure having you in class today. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. It was Thank interesting you. watching everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Cheryl. Thank you.